I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Arakwell people of the Bunjalung Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Human Design Podcast with me, your host, Emma Dunwoody. I'm a qualified master coach and human behavior specialist, as well as being a qualified human design coach. And I work with clients every single day to answer the big questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And what is my purpose? I also assist them to transition from the person they think they should be to the person they really are on the inside. I teach people how to actually live their design instead of just knowing it. And if this is something that you want to do too, well, stay tuned or reach out for private coaching or human design unpacks where I show you exactly how to live your design. Hey, before we get into today's episode, I want to share an incredible opportunity for you to create what I believe is one of the most powerful foundations to transformation, happiness, well-being, vitality, abundance, all of these incredible results that I've experienced over the last number of years. And that is with the FLFE. I know, if you've been around a while, you've heard me bang on about it. But now I'm working with these guys because I believe so strongly in this business. In 2019, we put the FLE, FLFE, the Focused Life Force Energy, onto our home. And from that point, everything in my life amplified in a good way. And we're talking about a time in the world where everyone was freaking out. Uh, we were living in lockdown. Everything felt challenging. Yet myself and my family seemed to be having the time of our life. I went from $35,000 to $350,000 that year in my business, not to mention the improved relationships, um, the harmony within our family, um, the health that I've watched this FLFE help me create and amplify, even healing things like broken bones and childhood asthma. It has been such an incredibly impactful thing um, in my life and my world. I mean, in lockdown, I didn't even want to leave the house. None of us did. Like we were the only people who were really happy to be locked in a house, cut off from everybody because the FLFE felt so incredibly good. Now, it's my belief that the way that this really works is because we're operating from this higher consciousness, it, it puts us in this place where it's like living and being and working and acting from a temple. How is that a good thing? Well, that means that we have access to higher frequency, higher consciousness. It means that every question we ask, we're going to get a higher frequency answer. Every time we want to heal something in our body, we have a higher frequency energy behind our healing. Everything gets amplified because everything is higher on the consciousness scale, meaning that we get where we want to go faster. And look, that's really been my results. I think one of the things that I love so much about it is being, um, is noticing how much I really trust love and back myself. And I really think this has got so much to do with it. My plants are thriving. My animals are thriving. My kids are thriving. We're all thriving because of this FLFE. And I really believe that it is fundamental for any transformational journey and really vitality and spiritual evolution for everyone. So if you're curious, go check out the links in the show notes. You can do your free trial no obligation, no credit card, no nothing like that. And then if you decide to sign up, it's super cheap. It's less than a coffee a day a week. It's a really, really affordable, powerful thing that you can do for yourself to completely transform your life. So go check it out. Enjoy today's episode. Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. I am excited to bring you the next um, continuation of our human design roadmap series. And if you've been following you along, you know that the whole purpose of this series is to make sure that you can fully embody and integrate your human design. Because what is the point in having all of this knowledge, but not actually being able to implement it into your everyday life? Like seriously. Um, so I'm here to make human design super simple for you so that you can actually create a life that you love um, through human design. So another big piece for me that I just want to reiterate, because I know I really bang on about this a lot, but it's this piece that like 
the other thing that I think is so important about understanding our design these days and really building this muscle of trusting our own authority, trusting, you know, our connection and communication with the universe and to our guides, angels, whatever those other energies are that, that, that show us the way and, you know, that are in constant communication with us to really support our journey is because we live in this really chaotic time, right? We live in this time where we're, we're finally seeing the truth. You know, we're finally seeing how we've been so heavily conditioned and manipulated for generations and generations and thousands of years, if not tens of thousands of years, maybe hundreds of thousands of years, maybe not quite that long. But the point is that we are in this incredible time of opportunity where all of these these ways, institutions, bodies, um, whatever it might be, they're all falling down. They're breaking down, which is a great thing. Although I totally get it. It feels super uncomfortable for so many of us out there experiencing it. And in this time of things burning down or falling down or breaking or ending, all of the things, which is perfectly normal, we must find a way to love, trust, and accept ourselves more. We must find a way to make decisions that we can rely on, that we can trust, and we must find a way to believe in who we are and have the courage to go out and really fulfill our purpose, like be the person we came here to be. Because I hear this all the time at the moment. And that is so many of my clients are like, I just, I don't have someone to look up to. I don't have a mentor. There's not someone doing it the way I'm doing it that I can look to. And well, that's really normal right now. There are so many people who are forging a new way. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably one of them. So it's going to feel uncomfortable and bumpy and you're not going to have 100% clarity, no matter your authority, you know, like as long as your mind's involved, it's going to want more clarity. And we have to be able to trust ourselves through this process because we are here to create the new paradigm. If you're listening to this podcast, then I'm here to tell you that your soul is probably here to contribute significantly to this new paradigm. And the more we do the work on ourselves, the more we raise our consciousness, the higher the consciousness goes, the more people that we influence just by being ourselves. We don't actually have to teach anyone directly. We don't have to do anything directly um, if we're constantly raising our consciousness. So our job is ourselves. Our job is to help each other grow. Now, today in the Roadmaps Map series, what I want to share with you is profile. We're up to profile. Now, if you are new to human design, um, then have a look. You're going to have two numbers. It's going to be like a 2-4 or a 5-1. And there's a bit of a, there's a slash in the middle, okay? This is your profile. These two numbers, they actually come um, from the top two um, gifts, glyphs, I should say, not gifts, glyphs on your chart. So if you're looking at your chart, the top right hand square, which is your personality sun. And if you've got genetic matrix, it's black. But if you've got my, um, uh, you got your, your body graph through, through my website, then it's going to be purple, I think, a darker purple. Um, and that, whatever the dot and then the number, and that number is going to be one, two, three, four, five, or six. That is your first profile number. And then if you go over to the other side, the left-hand side of your chart, and you look at the top square, um, that is your design sun. And it's going to have a number and then dot another number, one, two, three, four, five, or six. That is the second number of your profile. Okay. So I'm a three, five profile, for example. So I have the 37.3 on the right-hand side. And then I have the 9.5 five on the left hand side all right so this is where they pro that this is our profile that's where it comes from in the chart our profile one of the the ways i love i've loved this um explained is it's our toolkit i like to talk about it as our how it's how we fulfill our purpose it's going to be two significant themes 
that play out consistently, always over time. Okay. And this is how we fulfill the work we're here to do. This is how we learn our lessons. This is how we express our superpowers. These are the two most significant themes of the way we do things. Okay. Now, every single gate you'll notice has a dot and a like a number from one to six after it. And every single planet has a different way and that line number will influence that planet. However, what I need you to understand is that those top, that top one actually that we're talking about where your profile comes from, it's the most prominent energy in your chart, okay? That's why it's your profile. You will have other um, profile lines um, or other lines throughout the chart that are influencing themes, but these two are the, the most prominent, okay? I trust that makes sense. Now, a profile, this is how. So this is this is this energy of like how I'm going to fulfill my purpose. Um, and depending on the way we look at purpose, we can look at it in a lot of ways. We can look at it through our incarnation cross or activation sequence. We can look at through our, um, our pearl sequence or our vocation. We can look at it through our type. Uh, we can look at it through our north, uh, south and north nodes. There's plenty of places that we can look for purpose. And there's a story that's being told in all of those places that brings together a pattern or a thread or a theme, um, which is very magical and a lot um, will give you real clarity around, about your purpose here on planet Earth. But we're not talking about purpose today. We're talking about profile. So for me, a large part of my purpose is to shift the power from the few to the many through building amazing communities, through um, being really connected to my dreams and helping others connect to theirs, through the gaining all the skills, skills we need to manifest those things into reality um, and really finding, you know, doing the work that really lights me up. And what my profile does for me is it gives me the specifics of how I'm going to do that. So I'm a three which means I'm, there's a lot of trial and error and I'm going to go through one, two, three, four, five, and six in a minute. Um, and I'm a five. So this is the solutions-based um, problem-solving leadership, okay? So these are, the, these are the significant themes that are going to overlay how I express my design. So let me, oh, the other thing I want to say before I go into the line numbers is that we have to be aware that the one on the left-hand side or the second number this is in many of the old school knowledge, they say it's unconscious, okay? And some people really disregard the unconscious side of our chart. Like, well, it's unconscious. There's nothing you could do about it, which is total bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. The truth is we actually need to honor the body side of the chart first because it's our vehicle. This is where our stability in life comes from. So I want you to imagine that um, your profile, it's like a loop. It's not like you have to do one and then the other. It doesn't work that way. It's like a spiral that's constantly going, going, going. But if you feel stuck, if there's something in your life you feel stuck and you can't you know, move forward, then one of the places you can look at is, well, am I aligned with my design line number? Okay, so for me, it's a line five. So one of the big things being a line five for me is the question is, is there something I need to heal? You know, if I can't get my message out, if I'm not having the impact I want to have, which are the higher expressions of the five, then one of the things I want to be conscious of is or ask myself, is there something that needs healing? Is that why this isn't landing? Is it why it's not going out in the world? Is there something that I need to heal here? So, and with that process, once I've done that, then I'm going to go and have the line three experiences over and over and over to um, help me, you know, spiral up and lead, you know, through the line five. Like it's a spiral. Okay. So I trust that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the profile lines. The line one, line one is always a foundational line. We have two foundational lines, the one and the four. The one is like foundational, almost like life foundation. So if you're learning something, building something, creating something, um, doing something, it's very um, it's a very foundational energy. The other foundational line is four and it's people foundation, relationship foundation. Um, the line one is the investigator. These people are the born authorities. And one of the things that's going to trip you up as a line one, if you are in a you know lower frequency, if you are, I'm not good enough, um, I'm not ready, 
the line one's going to really trip you up because the line one's going to keep you in this place where I'm not an authority yet. Well, you're just born an authority. And over, over the years, you're going to gather more and more and more information because that's what lights you up. That's what drives you. That's what you love to do. Um, and that authority of yours will grow. The impact will grow. The depth will grow. But you're actually born an authority, okay? It's not the knowledge that makes you the authority. It's the energy that makes you an authority. Um, and being the line one, you are someone who wants to get answers, okay? Think about it this way. The line one wants to fill in all the gaps of life so that they have a nice, safe, secure foundation to operate from. The shadow of the line one is that they will potentially feel like they never have enough information and therefore not take action. So trusting your strategy and authority to move forward is really important because according to the ego, you will never have enough information okay you just won't so you have to move forward when your strategy and authority says so even if the ego says yeah we we don't have that certificate or we don't have that information yet or i don't know all the answers to that person's questions yet like you will they will come um, but if your authority says it's time to move forward it's time to move forward everything else that you need will come um, the line two, the line two is our naturally gifted. So if we've got our book learner, our knowledge-based learner, then we've got like our naturally talented. Um, the, the line two is the thing about being a line two, and I have two of them in my house. I got to tell you, like you have to follow what's easy. Like you have to follow what's easy because the natural talent, that's what you're here to do. That's how you're here to express your purpose through your natural talents. Um, you have to be conscious with the line two that often you won't value your natural talents because they come so easily to you. And the ego will try and overcomplicate things. It'll try and get you to do what you should do. But actually, you act, you need to follow the easy path. The other thing about being a line two is you, you're never going to love being told what to do by anyone in authority. You know, you want to walk your own path. You want to do it your own way. And that's got to be okay. All right. You've got to trust your way of doing things. And you're always going to feel more comfortable learning from peers than you ever are from an authority. Okay. That's just not, it's just not your jam. Now, the line two is also called the hermit. So if you have the line two, this is an energy that will often want to disappear and hide and step back, um, and which is fine because whatever that natural talent will be developed in that time. But what you want to pay attention to is because you have a projection field uh, through the frame of human design, there's two projection fields um, when it comes to the line numbers. Um, as human beings, we all project. We all project our stuff onto the other. Um, so it's not just the twos and the fives. It's everyone's doing it. It's just amplified for two of the line numbers. Now, as a line two, um, for you, it's it's not as challenging as the line five because what pro gets projected onto you is that see people recognize your natural talent and it's like it's actually calling you out of that hermit state out of that cave to come and share your natural talent so pay attention to what's being projected onto you and if your strategy and authority says yep green light do it if it doesn't then don't then you have the line threes the line threes are all about trial and error experimentation adventure if you have a line three in your profile, you're going to tend to want to be someone who um, doesn't want to live an ordinary life. Okay. I'm a line three. Um, I, I've never really ever, ever had that dream of like, I never had the dream of getting married. I never had, even though I did, I never had um, the dream of the white picket fence or the house. Um, we bought a house once and oh my God, it was the worst few years. I felt so trapped. Um and that's not to say that we won't buy a house in the future, but, you know, that that for me as, an, as a line three, I'd much rather live a more nomadic life and feel free to get up and move whenever we want to do that. Um, you know, we're better off buying investment properties and then renting where we want to want to live. The line three is all about this trial and error. So the trial and error is like you're either winning or learning. If you have a line three, you have a natural resiliency. Um but you just need to be be conscious not to get caught in martyrdom. Like, poor me, why does this always happen to me? Um, you know, why do I have to do it the hard way? And it's just because trial and error actually is your gift. So getting messy and experimenting and throwing yourself into adventure, um, being the alchemist, 
is all brilliant for the line three. And line threes are the most personable to others because they really are, in most cases, the one that really has walked in everybody else's shoes. Um, so they're very personable people. And I know for me, when I first learned about the line three, I was like, oh my God, I really didn't need that clarifying for me because yes, that's what my life's been like. And I had this real fear that, oh my God, am I always going to be tripping over my own feet? Um, and now I love it. Now I just feel like a kid in a candy store or in a in a white walled room with paints that I can paint anywhere. I can just make an absolute mess. Um, yeah. And the line three is always going to call out what's not working. So just get used to that. Get used to that, that adventurous um, experimentation, um, getting messy, like really experimenting with life. Then we have the line four. So the one, two, and the three, they're what we call the personal profile lines. Personal profile line means that um, that's inwardly focused on self. Then we move to the upper trigram. These are the transpersonal profile lines. And this is where it looks to the other, okay? So the line four, the line four is um, our other foundational line, but the foundation is found within relationships. These are the opportunists. If you're a line four, then everything that in your world comes to you through your people. So what is so important for the line four is to be with people that you feel comfortable with, that you enjoy being with, that you actually feel that you have influence over and that share people, places, experiences, all of those things with you. Because that's the way, that's where you have your greatest power. You lead from within the group, within the pack. I see this with my eldest son all the time. We get this feedback at every parent teacher that, um, you know, they thought he was just going to be one of the boys and easily led. And then the moment he's in the class, they actually discover that he leads the class from within the pack. Um, the typical line four, they just want everyone else to, you know, succeed if you like. They want to, what they want to feel really, they want everyone else to feel great about each other as much as they do. You know, the challenge with the line four is that they do, because it's a foundational line, um, with, a, with the two foundational lines, if they don't have a sturdy foundation, they can feel really insecure and lost um, and, and fearful. So if there aren't these relationships in your life, um, then this is going to feel scary. It's going to feel really scary if you don't have good relationships, sturdy relationships, um, you know, even functional attachment styles in your life. I see this through my kids, both of them are line fours. And I remember reading years ago, like, line four children, they take longer to leave the nest because that, that relationship foundation is so important for them. And I think it's beautiful because I see that with both of my kids, they're both very independent. They, they love to go out in the world. Um, they love to have a crack out in the world, like do things, be who they are, have an impact. And they're also very, very connected to the relationships that they have with Justin and I, because that makes it safe for them to take risks with the relationships with their friends at school because they know these relationships are solid. Um, so that's what the line four really needs. It really needs to have those solid relationships. Otherwise, it's going to feel really, really lost. Um, and yeah, when they have those relationships and those group of people, they're powerful influences within the group. The line five. So the line five is the most transpersonal is the way that human design often um, often explains it. But what it really means is it's the most influential. Sorry, it's not the most influential. It's the most powerful. Um, influential is definitely the four's world, but powerful is five. What that means is the fives are very driven to have um, an impact in the world, to lead. They will always, there will be a power dynamic. Um, you know, are they using it resourcefully or unresourcefully? Also, when we have a line five, what we want to be conscious of is it, like healing sits in there, the he healing and healer sits in there. So we must heal ourselves first. And then the line five literally wants to heal the world with what it's learned and experienced or depending on its other, like for me, it's experiences because that's my other profile line. Um, whereas let's say with Taylor, she's a five one. Um, she wants to heal and lead the world with all the information, all the answers, because she's the authority, the line one. Okay. So the line five is also has the other projection field. The line five projection field is all about um, the other 
so not the person with the line five, the other, they project their wound onto the line five. Okay, so the line five is five is like a mirror to others that shows them their wound. Except in most cases, people don't have high enough consciousness to realize that it's them, not the line five. So they blame or they they put all of what they think is wrong with the line five. They tell the line five all of these things, but really it's just their wound. It's what's going on inside of them. It's actually their truth being reflected back at them. So as a line five, it's super important that you clean up your stuff. Like you want to do your work, your healing. Anyone's projections are, you know, not that do not take other people's projections personally, ever, ever, ever. What you want to pay attention to is what do they trigger in you? Okay. So you can have compassion for that person projecting their stuff onto you. Like, you know, okay, I get it. That's your wound. I feel for you. I send you love. But then there has to be a boundary there because there's there's nothing more for you to do that there unless you then enter into some sort of, um, or if it's a resourceful thing, it might be like a coaching situation. However, if someone's just dumping their shit on you, they should just, let's just say the hard boundary there. Um, but with it being a line five, you want to just notice what it brings up in you and because that needs healing. Okay. Does it bring up a childhood wound? Does it bring up defensiveness? Does it bring up resentment? Does it bring up self-criticism or judgment? Whatever it brings up in you, that needs addressing, that needs healing in you. And the more that you do that, the less low, low frequency, projections you'll actually receive and you'll start to get the higher frequency projections most of the time which are people people will be saying like um which happens to me a lot it's like emma i have this problem can you help me fix it yep absolutely so they're taking responsibility for their um you know their their wound if you like whereas most people out there in the world are so unconscious they're just projecting their crap onto the line five um then we have the line sixes. The line sixes are the what we call triphasic. They have three significant um, times in their life almost. There's these three journeys within the within the journey, within the bigger journey. So the first is zero to 30. And zero to 30 is very similar to the line three. Um, a lot of trial and error, a lot of experimentation, a lot of trying things, having experiences, winning and learning falling down, scuffing knees, banging elbows, that sort of thing. Then from 30 to 50, they take what they've learned and they start to create wisdom from it, okay? Um, they, they're, they're getting, and, and we call this on the roof. So they can tend to be a little bit more reclusive in this time. They step back. They're more um, contemplative. They're in a time where potentially their relationship stuff um is at the beginning of the middle phase. Hopefully the, the relationship stuff is slowly starting to work through. Um, then they're, they're building this wisdom, healing themselves from the first 30 years. Um, and then from 50, they do what we call come down off the roof. And that's when the, the role model really comes to life. The role model is actually... Um, you know, it's called the the leader and the teacher. But really for me, what it's all about is being authentically you. It's actually about leading yourself first. The role model to me is being someone who is being so authentically themselves um, that others can't uh, get full permission to be themselves because they see the line six. Then they also become this very wise guide that helps other people to do exactly that, to be their own role model, to be their own leader, um, and to be authentic out in the world. Um, the line six is the one that we talk about often that will have a soulmate. And it's not to say that others don't have a soulmate, um, especially there are so many definitions of what soulmates are. I think I heard um, Jay Shetty the other day. He said, you know, he believes that soulmates are anyone who helps you evolve your soul. And I'm like, yeah, that's brilliant because I know I've got plenty of soulmates. Um, but the Lion Six is always looking for something special, okay? So whether that's in their intimate relationship, whether that's in the work that they do, whether that's in the impact they're going to have, they're kind of the culmination of all the lines. So um, they are definitely here to be so authentically themselves, so that is the profile lines. Um, 
I think I said at the beginning, I'm going to go over it again because I can't remember if I did. If you have a smaller number first in your profile, so something like a, a 2-4 or a 1-3 or a 3-5, um, then you're a personal profile. That means that it's about your journey first. Then if you had the big number first, um, you're a transpersonal pro profile, which means that it's about your journey is fulfilled through the other. Now, human design also sometimes describes this as the personal profile, creates the karma, the transpersonal profile cleans up the karma. Um, yeah, I don't think that's really clear enough for people. Like how do we actually embody that? So for me, the best way I can describe it is the metaphor I often use is if you have a mental health issue, for example, or a goal that you want to achieve. For me, I had depression and panic disorder. So I focused on my journey to heal my brain. That's what I did, right? It was all about my journey. Whereas if Justin, who is a transpersonal profile, so he's a 6'2", you could be a 5'1", um, he, if he, not that he's ever had mental health stuff, but if he did, the best way for him to heal himself would be to go and find someone else that was challenged with mental health issues or someone else that wanted to achieve the same goal as him um, and work with them to heal themselves or achieve the thing. And through that process, they would be fulfilled. You know, their thing would be healed or fulfilled. So that's kind of the best way I can describe the difference between the personal and the transpersonal. So now you got it. Put them together. The other thing I'm going to say, the little caveat I'm going to say is a lot of people will say like a three, five is this and a um, one, four is that, or, you know, they have put these two numbers together and then made assumptions of how they would work together. What I would say to you is, is don't get too caught up in the memes and everybody else's, um, their version of putting your two profile line numbers together. Um, because you're, you're the guru. Okay. What's true for you is more important than what someone, than what someone else tells you is true for you. Correct. What you believe is true for you is better than, yeah, you know what I mean? So I would experiment with it, experiment with it. Um, if you want to go deeper, of course, come and join HCX. The doors will be open again. Um, I think next month it's, it's a little while away, um, but it's amazing. And yeah, play around with your profile because there is so much joy to be had and playfulness to be had and um, superpowers to be expressed through your profile, okay? Everything has a shadow and everything has a high expression. Once we can become aware of it, uh, then we get to choose. We get to choose what we express more of. Okay, that's it for today, beautiful people. I trust what you that you got from what you needed and I'm so grateful for you listening and I look forward to having you on the next podcast. Bye for now. Thanks everyone for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.